A lot of people say this is the perfect streamer, and well, it's not, at least not yet. You stole my heart of gold after my silver soul. Can you dig any deeper now? I gave you all I own, put you on this gold. I honestly didn't even have this one on my radar until it randomly popped up on a Steve Huff video on my feed. He was so excited about this streamer that I just had to check it out myself. I did not get this product in on review from Eversolo. I purchased it off of Amazon where it's been incredibly hard to track down. It's been on and off the site, selling out pretty quickly each time. How about this? Something a little different today. Instead of attempting to hold your attention till the end of the video, where I name off the pros and cons of the DMP A6, let's just get it out of the way right away and go through this with two positives and a negative. Kind of like you're trying to break some tough news to someone without hurting their feelings. We like you DMP A6, but Let's just work on some things. In all honesty, the con list isn't that long. This might be kind of hard to push to the end, but we'll see how far we can get with it. At the end of the video, I will run through the software, take a look at the app and the features offered. So positive number one, you look fantastic. We have things like the Ween products that look fine, but they're obviously budget gear and more focused on the performance than things like casework. The Blue Sound Node is a step up in the looks department. It looks pretty premium, but it's still missing something, and it is something that a lot of us want. A screen. The A6 has a fantastic one. It's a 6-inch touchscreen that has been flawless for me thus far. The brightness is great, it's easy to read from a reasonable distance, and the touch responsiveness is very good. You basically have something Hi-Fi Rose-ish. Not quite as large of a screen, mind you, but it's also nowhere near as expensive as a product. The screen has some party tricks as well. You can display the artist and track info, along with the cover art, or switch it over to the VU meters. We can select from a number of options here, and honestly, who doesn't like VU meters? Let me just pull you aside here for one minute to talk about three ways furthering your education with a computer science degree from today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University, can impact your life. Okay, number one, furthering my education allowed me to be more marketable for my current employer. It allowed me to move into more desirable IT roles. It can also give you a step up on others when you're looking for uh, opportunities in a career shift. Number two, my critical thinking skills were greatly increased. This type of thing can help you navigate challenges that come up in your workplace or even your daily life, oftentimes resulting in more successful outcomes. School today isn't so much about throwing facts at students, it's more about teaching how to think. Okay, and finally number three, it's a great way to improve your personal skills. You'll learn to work independently, self-motivate, and even increase your teamwork and collaboration skills. All this will also carry over into a great home life as well as professional. In the computer science program SNHU offers, you'll learn popular languages such as Python, Java, and C++, as well as development tasks in JavaScript, NoSQL, and AWS. SNHU is also radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. If you're interested or looking to expand in the IT segment, go to https colon slash slash snhu.edu slash koikendall, and it's also linked in my description below, to see what the current average salary is for a developer, and also request free information about the program. Now let's get back to the review. Positive number two, the DMP A6 has loads of connection options. XLR balanced, an RCA single-ended pre-out, it supports USB, optical, coaxial, HDMI digital audio, Bit perfect output, also supports external USB optical drives for CD disc playback and CD ripping. You won't have any issues connecting this with practically anything. If you want to take a look at this from left to right, we have the power switch and the three antenna on top. I believe the one is for Bluetooth and the other two are likely for Wi-Fi. A gigabit LAN port, so we already have some redundancy, offering both wired and wireless connections. That's very much appreciated too. Next to that, the HDMI, and more on that in a moment. Uh, then two USB ports, then three digital in connections, coax, optical, and USB-C. And finally, we have the analog outs with the single-ended RCAs up top and the balanced XLR below. It performs as a pretty competent preamp just so you don't require any analog connections. And now for the first negative. The HDMI was a huge opportunity to bring in eARC in my opinion, but alas, it's only an HDMI out with a focus on multi-channel audio. The Blue Sound Node has HDMI eARC 
Heck, I even reviewed a sub $150 amp from a Relic recently that included it, so it's unlikely to be cost prohibited. The DMP A6 is a digital connection monster, and this would have been a really nice addition to an already stacked list of connections. A lot of users may home this product alongside a TV rather than a dedicated two channel listening space and just want to improve their TV audio without going as far as a multi channel receiver but still get all the benefits of this powerful streamer. A little more info on what this HDMI can do though, at this time it does not support Atmos. It will only output DSD64 and PCM up to 5.1. It's still a great feature for some, but for myself, I would have liked something similar to what the iFi Rose offers. It would have been a fun feature to output the title or YouTube videos, as well as the artist and track information, things like that out onto the TV. Okay, let's take a step back over to the positive side again. We get a near perfect app experience. The Blue Sound app is generally my gold standard as far as app usability. The Weem Home software is actually fine, it keeps getting better too. And I suppose we can mention PlayFi. They're no longer unusable, but I still have trouble trusting that one after getting burned a couple of times. I have a PlayFi streamer that I should actually update and see how it stacks up now, just to check back in. But back to the A6, I really think it's the nicest streaming app I've used to date. Everything is so snappy and responsive. Leg is one of the biggest complaints on streamers, and this one certainly does not suffer from it. I will run through the actual app a little later in this video, show some of the features that were important to myself and maybe for you too. Okay, another positive, number two, and that's the actual hardware they used in the streamer. First of all, we have two Sabre 9038 DACs. If you happen to read the review over on ASR, the DAC measured very well, falling within the excellent category with some other high performance familiar faces. If you check out the notes from Eversolo themselves, they will tell you the 9038s correspond to two channels of DA conversion and outputting independently so that it effectively avoids the interference between channels. This reduces the background noise, obtains a better signal to noise ratio, and improves the dynamic range. They also utilized high quality components in the circuit using Wima, Nichicon, and Murata capacitors, as well as Omron relays, TI op amps. Basically, I'm saying they didn't pull out the junk drawer and empty it into these to keep them cheap. They put the good stuff in. Okay, negative number two here. Amazon Music is only available using Cast. Unlike Tidal, we do not have the ability to stream using Amazon Music within the Eversolo app natively. I reached out to their support on this subject and they came back with some good info though. They have completed the development of the Amazon Music built-in app like Tidal. They're just waiting for the certification from Amazon. However, they cannot predict how long that will take. So the good news there is it's ready and it's coming. We just don't know how long that'll take, but that's all right. And it's out of their hands at the moment. And there is a workaround. The workaround is using Cast. This is a screen sharing feature of the A6. You can remotely control the touchscreen from your phone. This allows you to use third-party applications like Amazon Music and still get the full experience. It's just not quite as seamless and responsive as the true built-in app like Tidal currently has. If the Amazon app works as well as their implementation of Tidal, we have some good things coming. The cast feature isn't my favorite for controlling Amazon Music, but what I really do appreciate that is you can change some of the settings on the unit and it's really simple. You don't have to do everything, you know, from the touchscreen itself. Now let's try to move through a couple quick ones here. Pro number one, I think it's the best streamer for under $1,000. It's really feature packed. I can't say for certain what would possibly draw me into spending more right now, unless maybe it offered HDMI ARC for something like $100 more. On to Pro number two, there's a removable M.2 drive underneath the unit. It doesn't include the drive, but it does support up to four terabytes. And this is another great option here for local file playback. It's fast, stable, and really simple way to utilize local storage, and it installs in a matter of minutes. You can eliminate the NAS storage and have everything housed in one location. And now for another con, no remote. I know everything can be controlled through the app on my phone, but that's just it. It can be controlled through my phone. What if someone else is listening as well and they want some control over the volume or track? A remote is a simple solution here. It is also nice to have volume control or a power button at arm's reach. This is a con, but once again, Eversolo is coming to save the day. As of right now, you can actually order the remote off of Amazon for the DMP A6. They reacted quickly after a number of requests for it. I have an order in for it now. I think it was less than $15, so I happily paid for that. But in the future, let's just throw that in. Back to the pros. So this is running on Android and they have self-developed their own original sampling rate audio engine. It opens up some possibilities as far as bypassing the Android SRC restrictions. That's what's enabling them to output third-party apps such as Apple Music, allowing high resolution direct audio output. This is exciting as well. And I'm curious what else they come up with as far as apps go. There's a lot of flexibility using Android operating system. 
Okay, we're getting kind of the bottom of the list here. Uh, another pro, we have plenty of digital filters to meet different end user needs. Not a lot to cover here. It's a good selection of filters. If you want to tweak some minor sound characteristics, you can check out the ASR review. If you want to see a little more detail here, he charts out the findings between these. And the final con for today, you just can't get these. I'm not certain if they underestimated the market for this product or it's a targeted plan to keep the demand high. But either way, these are rapidly selling as they become available. The first few releases only lasted a couple hours on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken, but I wouldn't fear. It looks like they're starting to become a little more available and I would guess that they'll be readily available soon on Amazon. I don't know how many times I've heard someone say in the forums that they wish the Blue Sound Node had a screen. Well, it still doesn't, but this one does and has loads of other important features. So it's not really that surprising to me that it rose in popularity so quickly. Now let's take a quick trip through the app. On the main page, let's start with the top left. You can see your devices. If you had other Eversolo devices, I suppose they would show up here as well. But for myself, I only have the A6. So all you can really do is rename it or delete it. Below that, we can see your current source. I have the XLR connection selected, and you notice the volume is maxed out at zero dB. I have this set as fixed volume mode, allowing my amplifier the volume control features. I will show this setting in the menu structure shortly here. If we select source, we can select between all the various inputs and outputs. No real leg changing any of these. And if you select the gear wheel here, you can set your DAC filters specific to the input, as well as your volume startup and graduality. I don't have any internal music libraries or NAS drives with external libraries, so I'll just give you a quick glimpse in the music folder. Looks as if it should be pretty quick and simple to navigate. And then we have the internal file structure here. Here we get a number of selections for the internal storage of the A6, even the CD-ROM at the bottom. Connect the drive over USB and rip your collection onto the unit itself. Now for something that most will be using, the streaming section. I've title up and running here, it runs really well, haven't had any issues to report yet. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we get the instructions for connecting things like Tidal Connect, Rune, Spotify, AirPlay, and DLNA. Now this one is the cast feature. It's the mirror of whatever is displaying on the actual unit. The biggest use case for myself is really two fronts. For one, accessing some of the settings on the A6, you can navigate through the various windows here. The majority of the selections are also available in the final settings window I'm gonna show as well. Point number two for cast is to use apps like Amazon Music or Apple Music. Like I mentioned earlier, the Amazon Music internal application isn't approved just yet, but this allows us to have the complete experience even without it. It would likely come in even more useful for some future third-party applications and updates as well. Lastly, we have the settings. We can modify some of the properties of the outputs here. We can drop into the HDMI output and change the PCM, DSD, and SACD options, for example. This is where you want to adjust the sampling rate output. I have mine at original. You can see the other options here as well. The volume pass-through mode is the fixed volume 0 dB output. This is what you want enabled if you want the volume control handled by whatever you're outputting to. In my case, it's outputting to an integrated amplifier. Leave the Eversolo sampling rate engine enabled unless you're experiencing problems with the sound from third-party apps, but this is what enables them to bypass some of the Android restrictions. In the display section, you can change the brightness of your screen and knob independently, change your screensaver timing as well as the mode. I really like the options here. We get a clock, calendar, things like that. It's nice to have that option. You can change the view meters from here as well. These can be adjusted on the fly while listening to your content. You can quickly switch from the artist and track information over to the VU meters without going into the settings. Beyond that, we just have a few settings for language, input method, power, and the about section. One notable here is the ability to change the USB mode from PC file transfer mode for moving content from your PC over to the device. And then we can switch it over to external storage mode for uh, an external library. Well, I think that should do it. If you're in the market for a streamer and looking beyond the node, I really feel like this is it right now. Nothing wrong with being perfectly happy with something like a Ween product. I still use their products all the time in some of my listening systems. But some users might be looking for a particular connection option or features and moving to DMP A6 will just make sense to them. It's been a really great experience to this point using this product and I'm looking forward to some of the additions they're gonna to bring to the table over some of the updates. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. It makes a world of difference to my channel, so I'd really appreciate it. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.